Before getting started, let's make sure we have all the parts. Here's all the parts you'll receive from Grunblau Design Studio. This also includes a comprehensive assembly document and access to the platform CNC owners group. Here are the front and rear legs as well as the aluminum extrusions that are part of the bundle from cncrouterparts.com. These extrusions come already cut and tapped for easy assembly. Here is the rest of the bundle you'll receive from CNC router parts, including electronics and hardware. You will also need to select a spindle mount that is specific to your application. These are the other items, mostly from McMaster Car, that you'll also need to source. Please refer to the bill of materials on my website for the complete description and quantities. In this video, we'll begin by assembling the base to the platform CNC. To start building the machine, we'll attach the hamstrings and feet to the table legs. These will help to stiffen the legs while providing backspan support for the 8020 extrusions that are the bones of the platform CNC. These legs are adjustable and can be used to level the table if you wish to use them that way. I prefer to use the provided nut to attach the feet to the table so that I can level the base that the machine will rest on. I will just repeat the same process for all of the legs. Before we attach the legs to the extrusions, we'll slide in the T-nuts. Keep an eye out for burrs. You'll most likely be able to clean these up, but I'm going to set them aside and deal with them later. I needed to come up with a way to have a second pair of hands. I figured I'd use some short extrusion as a kickstand. Here might be a good time to mention that when fastening to the ends of the extrusion, use the one inch screws. When fastening to the T-nuts through eight inch steel, use half inch screws. When fastening to the T-nuts through 3 16 inch steel, use the 5 8 inch long fasteners. With the front fastened, I can lift the other ends of the extrusion onto the hamstrings and fasten to the leg plates. Attach the hamstrings to the underside of the 8020, adjust if necessary. 
When starting the fasteners in the T-nuts, it is helpful to give a bit of a wiggle by hand to get the thread started to avoid cross-threading. Find the center of the table and make a mark at 30 inches. These are the cross supports for whatever insert you choose. The spacing is not extremely important, just make sure they are perpendicular to the rails. I spaced them at 18 inches on center. Using the rail itself, make a mark on the extrusion through the holes. Align the T-nuts with these marks so that they are accessible. Start by attaching the top rail. You may want to loosen the fastener in the leg plate to gain some tolerance. Then attach the lower rail. Lift the top rail up to match the top of the leg plate. With the long straight edge, check the straightness of the top rail and adjust if necessary. Start in the center and work your way out towards the ends. Tighten all of the fasteners in the top rail. Start all of the fasteners in the lower rail, but do not tighten. Now we'll partially assemble the Z-axis carriage. We'll use this to set the offset of the Y and X-axis rails. I like to mark the flat side closest to the loose setting on the eccentric bushings. This will make adjusting the bearings much easier when we get to that step. Both of the concentric bushings go on the top rail, while the eccentric bushings set the tension on the lower rail. Set the eccentric bushings all of the way open.
With the carriage mounted on the rail, fasten the lower rail through the carriage, setting the width. This movement should be consistent, adjust if necessary. And repeat for the other side. Mark the holes for the small extrusions. You may need to loosen the end holes to make tolerance. Insert all of the required T-nuts. Mount to the inside of the leg, taking care to match the height of the long extrusions. Next, mount the angles in the corners. Here I have the basic structure of the base complete. In the next video, I'll mount the saddlebags that house the electronics and install the lead screws and motors.